how long was I talking? <laughs> Girl, I thought I pressed record. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica. I thought I pressed record. I was talking about China and Tyga and them. Girl. <laughs> I have been talking for at least five minutes. Talking about China. Tyga, I didn't read the little article and everything, girl. I'm not about to read that shit again. Anyways, China wants Tyga to play. Go ahead and like, like, subscribe, and comment, and let me know you stop by. Tyga wants no. China wants Tyga to pay her legal fees in a case that she initiated, and she also is in a battle, child support battle with him, to have him pay child support for the 24 hours that she has him a week. I thought y'all was in the comments saying that that wasn't true, that she doesn't have him just 24 hours a week. Maybe that's just your wishful thinking, but there's too many sources that say she only has that child from, what is it, from, it's like a weekend. They, somebody, somebody was calling her a weekend mom. I mean, it's no tea. It's it's okay for him. Like, there's no, like, shade against her for, there's no shade against her for not having custody and not having full custody of her kid. I don't, I, I'm not going to shame her for that. Yeah, because we're used to the women having full custody, sole custody, sole legal and physical custody. And in this case, this, the father has, has um more custody than she does and fine, whatever. But I feel like it's weird for her to be like, I need child support for the days that I have the kid. What? And then it said that she made $240 million in 2021. And I'm like, China has her lash business. She has her bundles business. Where is this money going? Where You can't be spending all of your money on legal fees. What is happening? There's the beast. <laughs> the other little the other little dog. The other little dog look he li- literally looks like a burrito with legs. Oh, <laughs> oh look at our kid. He's running towards her. <laughs> Oh, that is so cute. That little one is so cute. He ran off. She had to go get him. Talking about Graham. Is that the dog's name? Maybe his name is Teddy Graham because he does look like a little teddy bear. He looks like a little Ewok. And the little Pomeranians with the little legs. Girl, so cute. Um, Y'all want us to believe she spent $240 million in two years? If so, somebody needs to call the same folks who took Britney Spears' money. Because what? She, girl, girl, y'all so damn stupid. She better go back to being Black China because Angela broke. Girl. Girl. There's no way on God's green earth did $240 million dry up Y'all better leave my baby girl alone. She's got a lot of money. She's got money, money, money. Tyga, you better clean this up before the girls of trans experience come out, come out here and clear this up. Girl, what? Girl, let me tell y'all something. Girl, I, I, I can't wait till we get to the day where somebody be like, you mess with trans women. Everybody, everybody be like, girl, so what? <laughs> girl, don't nobody give a fuck. Don't nobody care. Literally, don't nobody care. Y'all should know that men sleep with whoever they want to sleep with. Girls, crazy. Y'all crazy. Oh my God, we're going to tell that you sleep with trans girls. Okay, and so what? Girl, what else is going on? Now, what else is going on? The trans girls have to stop it. The hetero girls, the cis hetero girls have to stop it. The trans hetero girls have to stop it. Stop acting like sleeping with y'all is taboo. That 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 only that only feeds into the violence that's enacted upon you. Stop acting like sleeping with y'all is taboo. It's not. 
People have sex with who they want to have sex with. People want to get pleasure for who they want from whomever they want to get pleasure from. As long as you ain't getting pleasure from a child or animal, who gives a goddamn who somebody is getting pleasured from? Y'all have to stop it. But like I said, the the hetero, the cis hetero girls and the trans hetero girls who center men, y'all need to cut the shit out. Cause don't nobody give a fuck. Really. And if you didn't know, now you know men and women want to, and men, women, and everyone, non-binary, and those who love to have like to have sex or enjoy sex are going to have sex who with whomever brings them pleasure. Okay. Why don't these celebrities just get jobs when they don't got money like the rest of us? Because they're public figures and it will be a distraction. Some people go get regular jobs. You go work in an office somewhere in the back somewhere. Y'all keep saying here this money and where this money every ever consider she put it in a trust so she can give herself an allowance thus making it seem like she doesn't have any money so she can get a payday y'all y'all know about money y'all don't know about money and try to have opinions my husband held me at gunpoint and is asking that i pay legal fees girl what I don't get why celebrities don't invest in real estate instead of buying huge unnecessary because part of that scarcity, lack, low vibrational mindset is I have to show off. I have to show everybody what I have. I love to see millionaires and billionaires wearing sneakers. Wearing sneakers, wearing jeans, wearing sneakers with holes in them, wearing um, hoodies. There comes a mentality with those who have not been able to, that when they are able to, they want to show everybody that they're able to. And a lot of the times, they're only able to do half of what they're showing you. And a lot of them are living beyond their means and spending money on frivolous things and not investing. They just want to show. They want to just do it for the gram. Do it for the gram. Do it for the gram, girl. And behind the scenes be broke, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially. And they be broke and they be trying to show y'all that they're not broke. A lot of these people, especially these people on reality TV shows, they really be posing on the Instagram. It's a whole show. What you see on that, it's like a different world. It's like, this is none of the shit is real. Somebody said, go back to OnlyFans. Let's see what China's going to do. I don't know. Y'all agree? Latoya Luckett says she in her next marriage. Scam likely. Y'all agree? Latoya Luckett says her next marriage, in her next marriage, her husband will come before her kids. Because that's the biblical order. I'm so tired of y'all with this shit. What are y'all following? Haven't you seen that it doesn't serve you, but you just following some shit? What the fuck? I'm following biblical order. And what does it say? To put the man before your own fucking kids, you dumbass. Girl, if you if that's the order that you're following, it's the wrong order. Don't you ever in your life put some nigga above your children. Girl, that's crazy as hell. That's crazy as hell. Let's hear what she has to say. It can be a thing. This is the beauty. Shut up. Um, and understand that no, if we get married, they don't come first. It's you, you know. Once you become, become and I learned that. Like you, you said, if, if, you get, if, if you get married, you'll, your husband will become priority, and then the children. That's the biblical order, right? So I try and go by the biblical order. Does it make sense? That's harder said than done, and it's. I've been on the other side of that not happening mm. twice, and it's it does interfere a little bit because you're like. When you get married, right, and you become someone's wife, 
and then there are other things that come before you, you feel it immediately, especially when you've been waiting to be a wife and be first or, you know, feel like, you know, desired in that position. Like it can, it can be, it can be a thing. You can be a thing. And it's harder to say as a mom with two kids, cause nothing should come before your kids. No, I, I don't, I don't like should, you know, right, right. There's no should, you know, like everybody has what works for them. And like the Bible says this, and this may work for this. And you can believe in the Bible and then still feel this way. And like, I think that. Girl, she sound crazy as hell. Let's see what some of the comments say. I say, I hate to, I said, I hate to see women participating in systems that don't serve them. Did you see her mulling over what it meant to be a wife? Like, does it, like, you're following something that you can't even verbalize clearly with conviction. And you want to still participate in that? That's like putting one leg in a bungee cord and jump and be like, well, it's biblical order, even though it doesn't make sense. You're going to follow something that doesn't make sense. So in my eyes, you're a goddamn sheep. And the herd gets slaughtered, my dear. Why are you following something that you can't even speak about with conviction? Well, um, 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 you know, well, being a wife, because, um, um, I did that before, because it, and I know it sounds, it's easier said than done because it shouldn't be done because it doesn't make sense. And when you do that, if you haven't realized that you're putting a man at the center above your children until your children are no longer dependent on you for their survival, then you can turn around and put your husband first. You put you first and then your children. And then here he comes because he's a full goddamn adult who doesn't need anyone for his survival. He doesn't need you for his survival. Well, he does. Why they simultaneously try to kill you girl and make you work like a damn mule um, and understand that no if we get married they don't come they don't come first girl that's crazy as hell for her to say that and then be like well it's easier said than done right so why are you saying it dummy you sound dumb somebody says lol you come first your relationship is also a priority when you aren't good when your marriage ain't good everybody suffers it's about establishing and maintaining a solid foundation Bondi says she's learned nothing. Children are a byproduct of husband and wife. There needs to be order for them to follow. Kids see how their parents prioritize each other and it helps with their upbringing. While you're neglecting, I won't say necessarily neglecting, but when you're putting your, all you're doing is showing them that you don't put yourself first. That's all you're teaching them. And when they get older, they're going to be like, why didn't you put yourself first? We saw you always put our father first. You put yourself second. Then you put us third. Why did you do that? Why? The biblical order. Girl, if you don't get the fuck up out of here with that. A lot of you put your kids first because man made you a mother first. Imagine being a wife and fully honoring that. When key, when the kids leave, you two are left. This is a convo for married folks and those alike, not people who don't understand or have some values. And you assume that people who are married have some values while the divorce rate is at 50% still. Somebody was like, people are not getting married. Yeah, they're not getting, they're, the divorce rate is low because people aren't getting married, but the divorce rate is still 50%. So what does that tell you? Okay. Um, listen, I agree, but the correct thing to say is you put your, the, the, but the correct thing to say is put your marriage before your kids. Some of y'all have witnessed parents that raised y'all on a, on, on the biblical man first approach, and they took it too literal and too far and put their man before their kids. You are not supposed to put your man before your kids. You put your marriage before your, before the kids. This is equivalent to putting on gloves before surgery. If you don't protect the hands entering the body cavity, okay, look, stop looking at the man and look at the marriage. It's all about centering the man. And what happens is when the man is no longer the center and children are there, 
that's when they're likely to leave. They're likely to, because they're not the center. Those particular type of, and a lot of them are like that. If they're no longer the cent, the center, have a baby on a nigga who was the center of your world and see, don't he leave? Sorry, but my kids will come first as being a child and watching a man be put before me was horrible. Exactly. My child would be fed first, then my husband, right? Because you're a full grown adult and you can be making your own play, right? And me giving you a plate of food, it's just me being nice, being nice to you. It's not a requirement that I make you a plate of food. I'm being nice. I'm being considerate. And hopefully you're in a relationship where the person is also considerate of you and will make your plate. Because we live in such a baby mama culture in our community, what she's saying sounds absurd. Yeah, because a lot of y'all follow in a, a biblical terms and like this girl said, oh, somebody sent it to me. Let me let you hear this girl say on um, Tiki Tok. Tiki Tok, 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 Tiki Tok. Mm-mm, shut up. Tiki Tok. Okay, how does Tiki Tok? Oh, my inbox. Here it goes. Listen to this. Let me see. I'm too Whether fucking we busy. Or not, the black church has always been a tool of white supremacy. The way we were introduced to the black church was through slavery. So the idea that it wouldn't be used to try to control people, specifically the people who are giving birth to the next generation, is outrageous. A lot of black people use the church in the same way as colonizers use the church, as a way to justify the mistreatment of other people. And then to watch some of you aunties who did not live by the church's rules and regulations and spent the early part of your life traumatizing a whole bunch of people, then try to use the church to oppress the people you traumatized is literally playing into the original oppressor's game. And the way some of you guys manifest destiny your way into other people's conversations to try to prove that you're morally better than someone else because you continue to uphold a system that was literally made to keep you oppressed is quite literally the most insane thing I've ever seen. But like the illustrious prophet Sister Jennifer said, damn, it looks like people are more interested in the church than their relationship with God. Whether we like to admit it or not, the black church has always been a tool of white supremacy. The way we're introduced. Here's another one. The black church operates like big pharma. They need a certain amount of people to stay sick so they can continue to make money. Now that black women are removing their membership from the church, they're also not bringing their children to the church, which is going to be the church's new tithers. It is way easier to indoctrinate a child than it is an adult. And by rituals like christenings, baptisms, dedicating your entire life to the Lord at 10 years old, you are now indoctrinating children to worship the church and give money to the church. And within that community, you are telling little kids to blindly follow authority, to be submissive and obedient, and to stay pure and innocent. The church is a perfect hunting ground for predators. And whether we like to admit it or not, the church hides predators and protects predators because predators and the church have a mutual understanding. The predator gets some type of authority in the church and also gets an endless supply of victims. And the church now gets an endless supply of sick people that they can convince that they need to do better because of what happened to them. And now that black women are finding community outside of the watchful eye of churchmen, that is messing with the church's current money and the church's future money by way of your children. And in the church's eyes, if God gave his only begotten son, black women, why can't you do the same thing? Bitch. The black church operates like big. So I want to tell you, I love the next generation coming up. Oh my God. This is, this looks like, Sometimes when you are, when you have these thoughts and you're among people who are not in there yet, it's hard to be in community with us because because they're, they're on a different level. You see that they're committed and devoted to being stuck in the matrix. And you're just like, I can't, I got, I got work to do. I got a road to take. I got to speak. I need for people to hear this. But then at the same time, that's why, I, that's one of the reasons why I made a YouTube channel. Cause I was like. I have things that I want to say and I can't say them just to everybody, but I feel like I, I know that I'm not the only one 
who feels this way. That's why a lot of people feel seen when you are saying like, it's okay not to do this. It's okay not to do that. It's okay not to be wrapped up in this matrix and all of these systems that you have been able to witness yourself, your own eyes have been able to witness the harm that it does. And you still want to participate in it? You still want to participate in this? You're still choosing to participate in a system that oppresses you. You choose to center men and you know for generations and eons, okay, how they have mistreated women and yet and still you see the good or whatever or whatever. And you still want to participate in these systems because I don't know, maybe, you know, I think that's just part of being a human. Maybe you think you're going to have a different experience, even though every player before you who made the same kind of moves in the game ended up at a, at the same position. And yet, and still you want to follow that road and see if you can make a different choice and, you know, and have a different outcome. Maybe so. I don't know, girl. I don't know. But homegirl was dropping knowledge and and you talking about biblical, biblical orders and all this other stuff. And you're like, you can't even really say what needs to be said because you know, it sounds ridiculous. And it's really, you know, and shout out to you for having faith, but have faith in something that serves you. Like, honestly, why do you have faith in something that that doesn't serve you? Like, I don't understand it. I've never gotten it. I've never gotten it. I remember I was thinking about this the other day. There was these these ads back when I think I was in my late teens, early 20s, maybe more, more like my late teens. There was this ad. I don't know if it was De Beers but it was an ad selling left-handed rings for women, right? Because your left hand is where, your left ring finger is where the wedding ring goes. But for those women who wanted to wear, I've always worn a ring on my left ring finger. It's my dominant hand. I've always worn my rings mostly on my left hand, always. And I've always worn a ring on my, I remember, I remember several women telling me, you shouldn't wear a ring on your ring finger. It's bad luck. I'm like, bad luck for what? What's bad luck is attracting a motherfucker and getting married to him and being in the wrong goddamn shit. That's bad luck. Honey, putting a ring on my fin- on my wedding, quote unquote, designated wedding finger, girl, has probably saved me a lot of needless suffering. But De Beers had a, I think it was De Beers, and you can look it up. I could actually look it up. But they had an ad, an ad campaign for left-handed rings for women, like rings that you can wear on your left hand. Let me see. I think it was De Beers. Left hand, oops, left hand ring campaign in the 90s. It was the 90s. Here it is. I remember this. I remember this. I remember this ad. It is De Beers. I remember this. The image comes right up. I'm going to save it. I'm going to share the image with you. And I'm going to read to you what it says. And this was something, I, I wonder what year this was. So I can figure out how old I was when this ad came out. Um, right hand ring right hand ring. It says your left hand is sensible one. Your right hand is the crazy one. Your left hand does what it should. Your right hand does what it pleases. Your left hand will support you. Your right hand will will surprise you. Raise women of the world, raise your right hand. I thought it was a left-handed. I put left hand and it still came up. I thought there was a, a left-handed campaign, left, left hand, left, hand ring left ring what left ring left-handed ring i remember it hold on let me go back left hand ring campaign in the 90s 
this one says any right hand ring wearers i guess it's married lefties do you wear your ring i thought the wedding ring was on the left hand what's the what what's where is your wedding finger it's on the left hand yeah that's what i thought the fourth finger Is your wedding hand your right or left? It's always the left hand. That's what I that's what I thought. I thought it was an ad this entire time I thought it was an ad for left-handed ring, but it was a right-handed ring to symbolize you being I guess a single woman, I guess, and not doing what you should, right? And if you read the ad, I thought the ad was so I remember those ads, but I always had it in my head that it was a left-handed ring. But I remember the purpose with the message, which I, I caught the message of the campaign was to speak to women who are going against what the left hand should be doing, right? Is getting married. The ads, everything, all this stuff is fed to you to sell you something. And it's really, and it really does harm to people. And it's like, it's really, it's really weird that you feel like you should participate. I felt like that before, even though. I had these ideas about marriage and not wanting to be married and not really like tr trying to be in relationships. And it's like, I'm not like, who am I? Who, who is this person trying to have a relationship with this person? And why am I doing this? Like, I used to always be questioning, like, what am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? Like, I literally used to be talking to myself, like, why are you doing this? 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 That's why a lot of the little relationships, they don't last long because I'm, because I'm not doing what is for me, what feels right. It doesn't, it never, it just never felt right. It just never felt right. I just knew that it wasn't right. I just knew that it wasn't right. Like this is not, this is not right. This is not, this is not right. It is not right. It's a be in relationship. That's what I'm talking about. When you start trying to be in a relationship, I was just like, girl, this is not, I wouldn't, I, I, I'm sorry, I do not like porta potties. Every time I see somebody going to a porta party, I'd be like, ooh, are they going to come out of there okay? But yeah, what's the name sounds foolish. You don't put your children, you don't put your children before your, um, your husband. I don't, I don't believe that. I mean, everybody to each his own, right? Um, people are going to do what they want to do. Like I said, people, like I said earlier, people have their marriages designed how they want, right? <laughs> Ed Sheeran recalls getting so high with Snoop Dogg backstage that he couldn't see. Girl, that's a mess. During an interview on Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend podcast, Thinking Out Loud songwriter and singer recalled smoking weed with Snoop Dogg backstage after attending the rapper's concert in Melbourne, Australia with his wife. Ed Sheeran shared that he's become quite close friends with actor Russell Crowe, who was also there that night and happens to be friends with Snoop Dogg. He added that while he isn't a huge smoker, Snoop and Russell Crowe often have smoke offs. I don't really smoke at all. I was in the dressing room and they're just smoking blunt for blunt for blunt for blunt. And I'm like, I guess at some point during the night, I have to just be like, I smoke with Snoop. A lot of people want to say that. I smoked with Snoop Dogg. Following some conversations over wine, the Drop It Like It's Hot rapper offered weed to Sharon. He was like, do you want some? And I was like, now's the time. We're having a good conversation. He added, so I have a bit. And I was like, I don't feel too bad. This is good. Then I have a bit more, and then I have a bit more, and then I have a bit more. I was just remembering, looking at him and being like, I can't see right now. <laughs> However, it was an enjoyable experience nonetheless. I, I'd be disappointed if Snoop wasn't high. As for Snoop, he previously shared that he met his match while smoking weed with country singer Willie Nelson in Amsterdam on 420. At the time, Snoop shared, me and him were playing dominoes one-on-one. -on -one. He's whooping my ass and I'm just getting higher and higher. <laughs> Somebody said, 
bro i got so high one time i started crying because i thought i was missing and no one would ever find me girl i'm so sorry but i'm not interested in so high he's blind ed i just want to hear more about snoop and russell crowe smoke offs that's funny he's like and i had a little bit more and i had a bit more and i had a bit more okay let's see what else is happening is a I part sponsored of it. the now yes. I sponsored the Let blog. Me tell you something. We need we need people like him. Sexy Red says the hood supports Donald Trump. And black people out of jail and giving people their free money. Oh baby, we love Trump. We need him back in office. Yeah, that, a little bit of free money goes a long way. We huh? need him back. Cuz yeah. baby, them <laughs> checks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, them stimulus checks, Trump, we miss you. That's like, whoa, Vicky, she's always talking about Trump. You see her ever? I like Trump. No, I ain't never seen whoa, Vicky. She's funny. She's I love Trump, though. Instagram. He funny to me. Like, I used to watch his interview, not interviews, like, him talking to people. He used to be calling people fat. Yeah. <laughs> Just ignorant. it's a mess child sexy red well you know she ignorant anyway so i don't know you know like i said you gotta you gotta meet people where they are bitch she um she is ignorant i don't think she read like somebody was on uh, who i think that was tasha k that was saying like oh my god sexy red who else i think it was i think it was tasha k saying sexy red with left is a bad she's giving a bad name to black women and all this other stuff and i'm like how are you putting the image of black women on some 23 year old black girl from where is she from memphis girl where's sexy red from how are you going to put the how are you going to put the the weight of the the image of the black woman on sexy red and sukiana's backs girl that's a mess they that they are representing that there is a spectrum of black women and uh, they we don't all are we're not all the same we don't all have the same ideas it's just what it is but to say that sukiana and sexy red oh they making black women look like making black women look like what to who because whoever it looked like to it they don't fucking matter i can guarantee you that (laughs) girl sexy red where is she from Sexy red. Is it with two D's? Oh, two Y's. St. Louis, Missouri. What did I say? Memphis? I would say close, but damn near. Um, so that's what I thought. So I don't think it's cool to say that I can think sex I mean sexy red is ignorant. She's saying she wanna see Trump back in office so she can get free money and the way he be talking about people, cracking jokes, roasting people, I guess but she doesn't represent black women. She represents that group of black women who are vibrating at that level. And I said, all that it is. And that's all you can say. I don't know what else you want. I think it's time to go. What y'all think? What y'all think? Let me see if one more thing. Yeah, they support. She ignorant. SZA says her brief romance with Drake was so childish. Yeah, two Scorpios. What do you expect it to be? So it was actually 20, 2009. In this case, a year poetic rap license mattered. I think he just innocently rhymed 08 with weight. Anybody who really knows me and was around during that time can confirm. It's all love, all peace. I just didn't want anybody thinking anything underage or creepy was happening, especially completely innocent lifetimes ago during a recent interview r&b songwriter opened up about her past relationship with canadian rapper singer drake you may recall the pair reportedly dated in 20 2009 that was like 14 years ago when they were in their early stages of the career sizzle 33 spoke about her romantic time with drake 36 and said we were really young it it wasn't hot and heavy or anything it was like youth vibes. It was so childish. Mm-hmm. As previously reported, Drake, real name Aubrey Graham, revealed his former relationship with the snooze singer in the lyrics of the 2020 song Mr. Right Now with 21 Savage and Metro Boomin. Want some more, nigga? On the track, Drake raps, yeah, she said, said she want to F to some SZA. Wait, because I used to date SZA back in 08. 
Shortly after the song's release, SZA born Solana Rowe took to Twitter to confirm that the two did in fact date. However, the songstress clarified that the relationship didn't occur in 08, but in 09. Despite Drake outing their past romance, it appears that the musicians are on good terms. It's all love between them. Real cool. We've always been cool. It's never been weird. Anytime he's ever mentioned me, it's always been positive. He never said anything negative about me. I'm grateful for that. You're grateful that he hasn't said anything negative about you? TikToker claims she's expecting a child with Orta- uh, Antonio Brown. The fact that y'all be... The fact that y'all see these men in violent fits of rage and then be comfortable enough with them to be so vulnerable that you'll share your naked body with these violent degenerate men is crazy as hell. It's crazy to me. You will be so in a such a vulnerable position with somebody who acts so violently. It's like an animal, like literally, I'm sorry, it is. It's like a primal animal trying to survive in the wild just just fucking and fighting fucking and violence fucking and violence just that's what it is and you're gonna lay in be- you're gonna let antonio brown lay in between your legs girl sorrows and prayers girl sorrows and prayers Girl, you would have been better off with Nick Cannon. This man is not mentally stable. She better be careful. Exactly. He's one of those types that would end up in a um a case because he didn't put his hands on you. It says Anna Wintour snubs Kim Kardashian. Y'all, it's so funny how y'all take your feelings about Kim Kardashian and you want other people to project those feelings to her. Like the way that y'all for years were like Kim, Kim and Beyonce and fucking Kim, Chris Kardashian, Chris Kardashian, Chris Jenner be at all Beyonce's events, all the thing they always be in the house, always. And it's so funny how because you don't like her, you assume that nobody else likes her, and so you project your feelings onto Anna Wintour and say, "Oh, she snubbed Kim Kardashian." Girl, how you know they didn't say hi hi earlier? And this is this she's just seen this person. She hugs the person next to Anna Wintour and doesn't really say anything to Anna Wintour. How you know they didn't speak prior? You don't know. You watching one clip and projecting your 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 issues with Kim Kardashian and saying, "Ooh, Anna Wintour snubbed her good girl." I gotta go. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments, peace.